Welcome back to Catholic Cocktails. This is a weekly video production of Salt and Light Catholic Radio in Boise. As uh, we come to you every week to talk about the famous saints and raise a glass, share a toast with you based on this book here, Drinking with the Saints by Michael Foley. So each week we introduce to you a saint of that week. It may be a, well, I guess we have also some feast days in this book. We as do, well, which I we do. Learned. Uh, so we'll introduce that to you, as well as the drink that is associated with the feast day or the saint. Then we'll send it over to Teresa Zapata, who's kind of our saint expert. She'll tell us a lot more about the feast, and then she'll send it back to us. We'll have our amazing bartender make the drink for y'all, and then we get to talk about uh, what we learned. That's right. So the saint that we're highlighting this week is Saint Sebastian, and the cocktail that we're going to be making in honor of him is the San Sebastian. <laughs> yeah, they, they really... So much creativity, yeah, <laughs> just knocked it out, out of the park. So what are we gonna need for this? So same old stuff that you usually need. You're gonna need your glass, you're gonna need your shaker, you're gonna need a strainer and some ice, of course. All right, well, we know what we're making and the things we need to make it. Now let's send it over to Teresa Zapetta and learn more about St. Sebastian. On January 20th, the church celebrates the optional memorial of St. Sebastian also known as St. Sebastian of Milan or St. Sebastian the Martyr. There is no doubt that there was a Roman martyr named Sebastian. But because he lived in the third century and the earliest biography dates over a century after his death, very little is known about Sebastian. Butler's Lives of the Saints says that it can be asserted historically that Sebastian was connected to Milan, either having been born or educated there. He did suffer martyrdom under the Emperor Diocletian, and he was buried in a cemetery along the Appian Way, now near the Basilica of St. Sebastian. Other stories go on about him that says he was a Roman soldier, which could possibly have been true because Diocletian began his persecution of Christians by purging them out of the army. The stories say that he rose through the ranks and became a praetorium, that is, a personal bodyguard of the emperor. It is said that he used his position to go to the prisons where the Christians were in order to uplift them, to build them up, to encourage them. It was this action that alerted others to his Christian faith, and he was reported to the emperor. Diocletian was outraged that one of his personal bodyguards should have embraced the Catholic, the Christian faith, and as a result, ordered his murder. Ordering this, his archers to use him as target practice, to shoot arrows at him, missing his vital organs so that his death would be slow and painful as he bled out. In the dark of the night, a widow named Irene went to recover his body. And when she did, she discovered he had not yet died. So she brought him back to her house where she nursed him back to health. Upon regaining his health, it is said that Sebastian went back to the palace and intercepted Diocletian on his way down the palace stairs. Sebastian rebuked the emperor, calling him out for his cruelty to Christians. I'm confident the emperor was initially shocked at seeing someone whom he thought he had killed. After getting over his initial shock, he ordered his guard to beat Sebastian to death in front of his eye so that he could witness his death. And when he was assured that Sebastian was dead, he had his body thrown into the main Roman sewer. It was there that he was again, or his body rather, was again recovered and given a Christian burial. The St. Sebastian cocktail, given its name, 
is a good choice to honor the saint today. I see after perusing its list of ingredients that it has the potential of being highly delicious. I'm especially excited by the garnish, a cherry pierced through with cocktail spears. To honor a man who loved Christ to the extent that he was willing to witness to him through his bar martyrdom, not once, but twice. Thank you so much, Teresa. All right, everybody. So here we are back at the beautiful Harp at Meridian, the Irish pub. And we have a new face with us. Elise is joining us for the first time. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank so you. what are we going to be making today, Elise? We are going to be making a San Sebastian. Beautiful. So what goes into a San Sebastian? So you're going to have a um, your lemon juice. Okay. And you're going to have your triple sec. You're going to have your grapefruit juice. You're going to have your rum and your gin. And we picked this Bacardi rum because it's, it's lighter, it's fruity, and a little bit floral. Um, and the gin is just crisp and clean, so they marry really well together. Um, yeah. Beautiful. And then if you were to make this drink yourself, would you change anything about it? Ooh. Would you use a different rum or a different gin? Or would you say these would be pretty safe? You could do the Irish gunpowder gin also if you wanted to kind of up the ante with the fruitiness and the floralness. It's, it would be a little bit more intense, but it's up to your palate. Beautiful. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, I'm going to step away and Elise is going to make for us the San Sebastian. We're going to go ahead and start with a um, half ounce of lemon juice. And you're going to get your jigger. You're going to fill it up with ice. And then you're going to do a quarter ounce of triple sec. And then you're going to do another half ounce but of grapefruit juice this time. And then you're going to go ahead and get a quarter ounce of your rum. And one full ounce of your gin. Cup runneth over. <laughs> All right. And then you're just going to put your top on, slap it together, give it a good shake. And then get your strainer. And you're going to start with a nice little coupe glass. And you don't need to chill it. You're just going to pour it. Straight out right. And then you're gonna add a little cherry for garnish. And that's your San Sebastian. Well, we are back and uh, cute little pink drink. No, nice. It's very adorable. Well, let's dig in. I will. Ladies thank first. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm a big fan of grapefruit juice, so I'm know, actually I'm, looking forward I think to this. this is gonna be, if I don't spill it everywhere. That's why I always make her go first. It tastes how it looks. It tastes pink. It tastes pink. <laughs> pink lemonade. You Kinda. didn't drink very much. Now I'm going to spill it all over me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll drink more next time. <laughs> See? That's very good. Yeah. I would I would order that. Totally. And, and there's very few gin drinks that I would order. So. Yeah, we don't get a lot of gin drinks here on Catholic Cocktails, but that's a keeper right there. So, well, St. Sebastian, one of the more well-known martyrs of the faith. Yeah, I feel like well known. I think so. Yeah. He was uh, martyred by a torrid of arrows, hence the little arrow, the arrow. that we have in our drink here. Yes. Um, unfortunately, well, I guess fortunately. Fortunately. Yeah. Well, like, I don't know. It's unfortunate for him, but also kind of fortunate. Um, he did not die after the first martyrdom attempt. Mm -hmm. um, and he was like, going to be buried. And the la lady who was like taking care of him was like, oh, no, so sad. He's died, you know. And then he was like breathing. And she's like, he's alive. <laughs> and so she saved him. And he came back, you know, he was all better. And then he went right back to preaching the gospel. And so, then he got beat to death and then he got by clubs. Death. So, you know, Yikes. the Lord works in mysterious ways. But it really is an outstanding example of the courage. I mean, it's like I'm out here preaching the gospel and then I get a whole flurry of arrows in my body. And right. then what do I do when I heal up from that? I go Let's right back out again. there and start doing it again. Do so it again tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, so even in the face of, of death, you know, he's still out there doing what he was meant to do. Yeah. I mean... 
I, there's not a lot of opportunities in today's age to really have to go through that kind of suffering and use that kind of bravery. But I did want to ask, is there a time in your life where you've kind of had to stand up for your faith a little bit or like yeah. kind of be brave, you know? Because before I came to Salt and Light Radio, I worked a lot in commercial radio. So it's really difficult sometimes to be a Catholic man in today's culture and not be able to live that out because you know commercial radio is all sex drugs and rock and roll it really is, and yeah. when you don't believe in that you know your your life is going a different way it's uh you know sometimes you get ridiculed for saying no right. when it's time to go out to the party then. yeah definitely. so you know sometimes you get chided but you know i would much rather stand up for the lord and know where i'm going <laughs> after yeah. i die right. than you know have to be able to celebrate something here in this life right Exactly. It's the long game. It's a marathon, not it's a, a sprint. It's not a sprint. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> what about you? Um, I wouldn't say there's been a lot of a lot of pushback in my life. I've been surrounded by a lot of Catholics, but um, I would say there's definitely been some times in parties or something where, let's say, some jokes were being made where mm. you're kind of like, "Hey, man, like that's that's, not, that's cool. not cool. That's pushing it a little far," you know, type thing. Or if if um, if the conversation on religion comes up, then it usually mm -hmm. would just be like, well, this is what I believe. And I would just choose to speak with authority yep. so as so as to really convey, like, this is what I believe, this is what I'm going to stand up for. And if you want to listen to me speak and, and have this actual conversation, then we can do that rather than just like, oh, you're Catholic and then having them attack me. Usually if you speak with a little bit more authority, um, at least in today's day and age, yeah. they, they kind of will respect you a little bit more yep. because they can tell that you've put the work in to know your faith. So. Trinity is really good at that, at defending her faith. We share a lot of Monday morning quarterback sessions at uh, the radio station <laughs> where she tells me about her weekend and uh, having to set a few people straight when it comes to her Catholic faith. So Sometimes. good on Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, anything to add? think so. All right. Well, special thanks once again to Jamie and her staff. Yes. Elise, the new bartender, fresh new face, did a wonderful job her first time out. Killed it. So hopefully we'll be able to see her again next week. But uh, thank you for joining us for another edition of Catholic Cocktails filmed right here at the Harp Irish Pub and Eatery in Meridian. And it's a video production of Salt and Light Radio because we're wacky that way. <laughs> wacky wild stuff. <laughs> so make sure to subscribe, guys. Please, please, please follow us. Hit that like button. Leave comments. We would love to hear your feedback as well as any ideas that you have for the show. Um, we're very much open to suggestion. Uh, so next time during our happy holy happy hour, excuse me, I always get that turned around, uh, we'll be talking about the conversion of St. Paul. Nice. And trying, it's very apropos for the situation, it's called the kicker. So. Oh, because he got knocked off his horse. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, until then, St. Sebastian, pray, pray for, for us. us. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>